Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the VP Toolkit Concept Kit plugin into a project, set up your stage for the first time, and then do a baseline and display fire. So once you've downloaded the plugin, you're going to want to extract uh, the plugin folder here. And then just want to keep that keep that handy. Once your Unreal Engine uh, four two six has started, I am going to create a uh, in camera VFX template project. Uh, this workflow should work in pretty much any project. The reason why I'm doing this is to create a baseline, so you can run into issues with uh, some levels and projects where other plugins or project settings can clash uh, with end display projections. So just as a baseline test, you want to have a project running with your stage setup in it uh, that you know has the correct settings and the correct plugins. So if anything's not working, you can always refer back to this project. So I'm going to create this project. Uh, I'm putting my project on my, uh, my shared drive, my server drive under Unreal Engine Projects, and I'm going to name it Baseline Test. So once that project has fired up, you're going to want to go into the level that it auto goes to, its default level, and delete everything underneath of stage. We will be using our own stage components for this setup. And once you've done that, hit save all, and then close your project. So we're going to want to take that VP toolkit uh, concept kit plugin folder that we extracted from our downloads and head over to our project folder. And in your base project folder here, you're going to create a new folder and name it plugins with a capital P. And then you're going to paste the VP Toolkit Concept Kit plugin folder in that folder. So now we can restart the project. So once you're in, your, once you're in the project, uh, you're going to want to go to Project Settings and go down to End Display and make sure that your End Display is enabled. Now, the VP Toolkit, the Concept Kit plugin is going to enable uh, most of the plugins that you'll need to do the in camera VFX workflow automatically, but you will still have to come into here and make sure that end display is enabled. Uh, once you've enabled that, you'll have to restart your project. All right, so once you've enabled end display, you're going to go into your content browser here and go scroll down to your VP Toolkit Concept Kit content. Uh, if you did not see that folder in there or that list does not look as long as mine, uh, you may have to go into View Options and Show Plugin Content. Uh, so once we're in here, we're going to go into Stages and then we are going to make a duplicate of this demo stage level. And I'm just going to name this baseline test, or I'll just name it baseline. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. If you have multiple configurations that you're putting together, one for your home, one for your, uh, your studio, you may have multiple stages. Uh, so then we're going to go into levels tab here, the levels window. Uh, if you don't see the levels window, you can go up to window and then to levels. Uh, I like to keep mine here tabbed with the world outliner and layers. Uh, so now once we have that, we're going to drag our duplicated stage into the levels tab. And then right click and go to change streaming method and set it to always loaded. So now you can see if we go out to our world outliner, we have a in camera stage settings, uh, which is what renders our in-camera frustum. 
we have the BP stage pawn, which is what controls our warp meshes. So that determines what mesh we use, how many, and what their IDs are. This is also how we control the movement of our stage. So if you move the stage left to right, you, uh, it will move all of the objects, all of the actors that are parented to it. And then uh, we have the inner Frusten camera, which has a green screen plane, uh, a, a plane connected to it, which we can use to create a green screen Frusten. Uh, I will just hide that. Uh, this, the settings in this actor will be what controls your in-camera Frusten. Uh, we have the reflections origin actor. Outside of your in-camera Frusten, this will be what controls the perspective and then we have our screen mesh which determines our view into our virtual environment uh, that is going to be the virtual representation of our physical screen so if this is an led wall it would be in the exact shape and size of your led wall if it's a projector you will size it to be the size of your projector screen uh, we have the VP Toolkit settings, which uh, are the settings for the widget system and workflow that I will be showing you over the next couple of videos. Uh, in these settings, we just want to make sure that we have selected uh, our BP Stage Pawn in Camera Frustum and uh, here. There's also a drop down where we can make sure that the rest of our end display components are referenced properly here. Uh, and then there is the BP in camera stage settings. Now this controls whether or not we're using the green screen plane as a in as a green screen to overlay over our frustum, our in camera frustum. Uh, that can you can enable that here. We have a few other settings. I'm not going to dive too deep into this for right now. Just an overview. Uh, we also have the viewport resolution buffer. So you can name your viewport here and then uh, create a buffer if you need more performance. This determines what layers are seen by the frustum or not seen by the frustum, uh, depending upon how you set this up. And then last but not least, we have the display cluster root actor, which is what makes the whole thing work. And for now, I'll just say it needs to be in your level. So once we have these actors in our level. Uh, we want to go to, this is for all projects, go to your project settings and then go to maps and modes and then uh, go to default maps. And then we're going to want to make sure that the map that we're in and that we want to render uh, for end display is selected. Quick little tip, if you are, if you are in that map, and you have just gone into that map and you have it selected, uh, you can hit this little back arrow and it will update with whatever map you have selected. But I want to use this one because this is what we are currently in. So once you have all those settings set, you're going to want to hit save all. And you generally want to use save all when you're using multiple levels or if you hit save current, it will only save uh, the current level that you are in, which means not all of your levels. So once we've set up our Unreal Engine level for end display, we are going to need to run the end display launcher and listener. To do that, we are going to go to C, Program Files, Epic Games, Unreal Engine 4.26, Engine, Binaries, and then .NET. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see End Display Launcher, and you will see End Display Listener. Uh, I generally like to dock these to my taskbar here, or pin them, uh, so that I can easily stop and start them at any time. Uh, so once we're in here, uh, 
If you're using multiple node, you will need to make sure that an end display listener is open on every machine that you plan on sending a uh, end display launch to. Uh, so th here's their end display launcher. You will not have to have an end display launcher open on all of your machines because this is just used to control uh, which machines get launched. So in your application section here, uh, this will determine the engine that we're using and the location of the project. And to add one of these, we're going to go to add project in game editor, editor in game. Uh, so now we're going to tell it where our engine is. So we're going to go to C, Program Files, Epic Games, 4.26, Engine, Binaries, and then this time we're going to go to Win64, and then you should see your UE Editor executable right there. You're going to hit that. Now it wants to know what project you'd like to load up. So I'm going to go to my shared drive, Unreal Engine Projects, and then Baseline Test. Open that and then, so next you're going to want to add a config file. So if you go into, we'll go to downloads and then we'll go to the extracted plugin and then content. And then if you go to example configs, uh, there is the baseline config, which we'll be using today as a baseline test. This should run on most machines. Uh, I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put that in my server drive under tools and then configs. Uh, so the placement of this config file cannot have spaces in its address. Uh, just as a forewarning, you will run into issues. So I generally like to keep it as simple as possible. If you're not using a server drive, uh, sometimes documents is the best place for them. I have some configs in there. Uh, so once I've placed that, now I need to tell the, the launcher where that is, where that config file is. So we'll go to tools, configs, and then here's the baseline config. Now make sure that you have your project selected in the applications list here. Uh, I've had many times where I have been wondering why it's not firing correctly and it was because I either had a no project selected or the wrong project selected. Uh, so now we should be able to hit run. So the first time that you fire up a level on a new machine, it will have to compile the shaders of that level uh, slash project. So if it's a heavy level with a lot of textures, uh, you may you may be looking at a black screen for 15 to 20 minutes, depending upon the performance of your machine. Since we're using a very simple level, you'll see that it should fire up fairly quickly. Uh, once end display fires up, uh, which you should be seeing now exactly how mine is, uh, this is a 720 viewport that I have here. So the size of this uh, may be different in comparison to whatever screen resolution that you're currently using. Uh, once it fires up, it will take the mouse control and you will no longer see your mouse. Uh, that is because the end display application uh, or Unreal application is becoming the foreground uh, rendering program. And you're going to want it to be that because you're going to want to make sure that it has the most performance so that you get the amount of frames. So if you're running this on a separate node or a separate machine, uh, you, you want this to be really the only thing running. So a quick overview. Uh, you can see now once you've ran this that you have outer frustum is what I'll be calling it, uh, which is outside of your, your camera's view. Uh, that is this outer area here. You can see that the frustum is this small area, the small darker area. The exposure compensation of the frustum is slightly lower than the outer frustum. Uh, so this inner part is 
determined the perspective of this is determined by uh, this inner frustum actor you can see once we look through it it is the same set up there and then the outer frustum is determined by this actor now in my next video i will show you how to set up uh, multi-user a basic multi-user workflow and we will be able to control these elements in real time as right now anything we do in the editor will not translate over to our end display projection uh, to if you have the end display uh, selected and it is the foreground element you can press escape to uh, exit it or you can hit kill and it will uh, send a command to close it Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you've liked this video and check out vp-toolkit.com for more information and more videos.